Hello everyone, this is Ashley Tucker. Thank you for joining me today. For today's card, I'm going to be using some brand new products from Pink and Main that actually just came out in today's release, including this stamp set, which is called Party Balloons. Pink and Main is celebrating their fifth birthday today and they are having a blog hop. So if you wanna check that out, just head over to my blog and you can start hopping along. So when I first started this card, I didn't really know where I was going to go with it, but I thought I could stamp a bunch of these balloons and then I could figure out what I wanted to do with them. And if I had any leftovers, I could just make other cards with those. So I have the stamps in my Misty tool, which makes it really easy to stamp them a bunch of times. And I'm stamping them onto Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock, and I'm using Distress Oxide ink in the colors Worn Lipstick, Festive Berries, Wild Honey, Squeezed Lemonade, Twisted Citron, Mermaid Lagoon, and Tumbled Glass. Once those were all stamped, I cut them all out using my Big Shot and the coordinating die set, and then I moved on to creating a frame because I was thinking about making a shaker card. I picked out this large rectangle die and I used some post-it tape in order to hold it down onto this A2 size piece of white cardstock, and then I ran that through my Big Shot to create my frame. Once that frame was cut, I used my ATG gun to adhere a piece of acetate to the back of it. I then added some adhesive to the top of the frame and I took some balloons and I lined them up along that top edge and adhered them. At this point, I decided to only use the circular balloons and to save the long ones for another card. Once those balloons were in place, I used some scissors in order to cut any excess hanging off of the edge of the frame. Next, I started working on the background for my shaker. I have a cloud stencil from My Favorite Things, and I'm blending some fog ink from Simon Says Stamp along the top edge of that stencil in order to create clouds all the way up this panel. Now, when you see the card at the end, you may notice that you can't really see this background, so it probably wasn't actually necessary to do this, but when I made the card, I didn't realize that you weren't gonna be able to see the background, so that's why I did this, and I left it in the video so that you could see the entire process. I placed another row of the colorful balloons on that background that I just created, and in order to keep them the way that I had laid them out, I put a piece of post-it tape across them so that they wouldn't move, and then I used a combination of my ATG gun and my Gina K Connect glue in order to adhere them along that background. And when I placed these, I made sure to place them in a spot where I know they'll still be seen when I put the frame on this background. Because if you remember that frame that I created, which is going to be going on top of this background, has that row of balloons along the top edge. So I don't want these balloons to be completely covered by that row of balloons. So I made sure to place them a little bit lower so that they still can be seen. Once those were placed, I picked out some of the strings from the stamp set and I glued those underneath the balloons using fog ink. And this again is probably another step that I could have skipped because you can't really see them once the card is complete. I took some doubled up foam tape and I placed it around the edge of my frame to create my shaker area. The sequins that I used to fill up my shaker are from Simon Says Stamp and they're called Assorted Moonshine. And then something else that I've been really loving for all of my shakers lately are these clear micro pearls. And these are from Brutus Monroe and I love the way that they look. They're very tiny so they're a little bit difficult to see but they're very pretty and I absolutely love the way that they sound in your shaker. For my sentiment, I took this Happy Birthday die set, which is also from Pink and Main's brand new release, and I cut the words out of both black cardstock and black glitter cardstock, and then the shadow die I cut out of vellum. Now I'm using my Gina K Connect glue in order to adhere the two word sentiments together. I'm adhering the glitter cardstock on top of the black cardstock so that I have a little bit of dimension to my sentiment. Once those were all glued together, I used that same adhesive in order to adhere those words onto the vellum piece. 
And as Laura Basson always says, don't forget to add your tittle. That's the dot on the eye. That's what it's called. And it's very easy to lose that piece. And it's also very easy to forget that piece. So don't forget it. It's never fun when you lose that little dot and you have to cut out a whole nother word just for that one tiny piece. Anyways, I added really tiny dots of that glue to the backs of the letters on that vellum piece, and I made sure to only put them on the backs of the letters so that you couldn't see that glue through the vellum, and then I placed the sentiment on my card. Now, I thought this card still needed a little bit of something, so I decided to stamp a couple of smaller sentiments from the birthday script stamp set from Pink and Maine. I stamped those with Versamark ink onto some Basil Licorice Twist cardstock, and then I embossed them with Alabaster White Embossing Powder from Brutus Monroe. I cut those sentiments down into strips, and then I popped them up onto the card using some foam tape. As you can see, I decided to put all of my sentiments kind of on an angle, and I thought that that looked really fun and kind of went with the overall theme of the card. If you know me, I always have to add a little bit of sparkle to everything, so I went over both of those sentiment strips with Wink of Stella glitter. Next, I decided to take some of the same kind of sequins that I used on the inside of the shaker card and glue them to the outside of the shaker, so this way it looks like there's always some sequins in all of those areas. I adhered that entire shaker panel onto an A2 size card base and then this card was all done. And here's a closer look and you can really see all of that shimmer and shine. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you really enjoyed this card design featuring some products from Pink and Maine. All of the supplies that I used for today's card can be found in the description down below. If this is your first time on my channel and you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I do new card videos every single week and I'll be back with another one really soon. Again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you and I hope you have a good day today.